Welcome to another episode of Dango Thoughts. This time I'm talking to Tomer Perrett. Tomer is an artist from LA and his paintings influence thousands of people. I always wanted to peek under the hood of how a brain of an artist works. What makes them create and how is the personality of the artist influences the art. Tomer's art is very diverse. It ranges from incredibly detailed portraits to undefined pieces that are not always easy to understand. The importance of the artist, especially today, I think needs to be emphasized. And it's becoming clearer and clearer to me that the role of the artist in society becomes as a leader. I'm sure that most artists wouldn't want to be considered leaders, but they are. They lead our thoughts and imagination into places that we haven't necessarily thought about venturing. They spark new ideas that are not always even fully formulated, but they're catalysts. Stephen Hawking famously worked while listening to Wagner. And at least to me, there's something about the visual art that particularly moves me. Now, of course, it's hard for me to assume too much about art because I'm not a painter. And that's why I wanted to talk to Tomer. I wanted to see how he thinks and how he came to be who he is. It's not easy to make it as an artist because enough people need to get interested in what you do on a level that not only pays the bills but allows you to keep growing and keep pushing the envelope. Well, Tomer managed to play that game pretty well and I can see why. His art truly is remarkable. We touch on many subjects from art to politics to psychedelic drugs and God. All around it seems that Tomer is just a down-to-earth guy that just wants to paint. Like he said in the interview, I don't feel like I have a choice. I must do it. I feel like a lot of us succumb to the pressures of what society tells us should be. We gotta find a job, we gotta go to school, we gotta become somebody, which of course is fine, but it takes some kind of courage to focus on what you understand to be true for you and then make a career out of it. And that's that's what we can all strive for. That's what I strive for. I'm always happy to bring conversations that bring you a sneak peek into the mind of a creator, somebody who lives their craft and devotes themselves entirely to what they do. There's some kind of magic to it. And I don't want it to come off as too loaded, but I think we can all strive to be a little bit more of artists ourselves in our lives. I want to take this opportunity to remind you that if you do like what I do, please like and subscribe and leave comments below about anything you like about the channel or don't like about the channel. And if you really like what I do, consider contributing through Patreon. The link is in the description. To me, artists were always shrouded in some kind of a mystery. It wasn't always clear to me how they think or why. But I think this conversation made me realize that they're just people who happen to be really good at what they do in creating visual art. That gives me hope. There's no one big secret to life and everything. It's just hard work, determination, the love of what you do, and the infinite pursuit of greatness. That's what I want to evoke in the world. I want the world to want to be better and to be inspired by individuals who devoted their lives to make something great. And now, without further ado, I give you my conversation with Tomer Peretz. Tomer, how are you? Uh, perfect, great. Good. Good. First of all, I, I, <laughs> first of all I, I, I deeply thank you for agreeing to do this. I know your time is very valuable. Um, so I'm humbled and I really do appreciate that sure. uh, very much. Um, so because of who you are, I guess I, I would kick it off with something super simple. But, uh, uh, but I think that that question has more, uh, more to say if somebody takes it seriously, I guess. So... What is art for you? Wow. Um, um, language. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole language of a different, maybe, um, way of understanding things. So anywhere between, um, visual to, to emotions, um, it's 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 a, the, the connection between the visual and emotions um, that speaks to people. So I would say language. So would you say it's a language with your way of communicating with the world, or your way of communicating with yourself, or all of the above plus communicating with whatever that is? All of the above. Yeah. So do so do you see? And I, I don't I don't want it to come across as loaded. I mean it in any way you want to take it, because I'm, I'm not aiming at anything. So do you believe in that thing, whatever it is, so that there's something we don't see that, that interacts with us in a way? Oh, hell yeah. Well, that's not an obvious thing. I, I mean, for most artists, yeah, I guess it well, is an obvious thing, but... I, I, I believe in a higher power that made us and leads us and um, definitely believe that there is a higher power and there is no coincidence and things are... 
Um, some things meant to be, some things are not. Um, I think we have the power and the abilities to change um, uh, things, but um, um, I do believe in the higher power. Would you say as far as uh, like the type of biblical God kind of? You know, biblical, th- biblical God is, a, I think it's a, a way of um, some people created a, an, a very creative way to translate you. What is this higher power? And they made a title to it and they made a story around it to make it very interesting. Um, uh, I don't know because I, I, I was raised in, in a family that are practicing an Orthodox family that are practicing and and um, um, Jewish family who who practice the Bible and 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 you know whatever were comes they, with that. Were they pretty Orthodox or was that kind of like a um, there is a great definition for it in Hebrew, but I'll try to find a definition in English. It's it's more like national orthodox. So, Lum- Lumanim, can you? Yeah, the T. Mm. So yeah, can you can you explain yeah. to the American? So audience? so it's um, not wearing black. Um, not we don't really they don't really look like they're practicing a lot, but they do, and and they're more. Um, um, a conservative orthodox so following all the mitzvahs following all the um you know shabbat and so so i've been raising that kind of a family but my beliefs were kind of shift a little bit uh, uh towards the western world um i'm more open to hear and 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 other cultures and beliefs and um i think it's it's uh beyond the, just this biblical thing you know um, so that you think it's 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 too narrow of a of a definition or or too narrow of a channel to view something like that i thing. think i i think but it's a great way to explain and teach young people you know what is what is religion and what is god and what is higher power you have to come up with some kind of a uh, interesting story to it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, and and I I believe that a lot of it is like some kind of a metaphor for for certain things that happen, you know. The, the, I, well, I, actually, before I so, so actually the, the, I realized that I don't I lived in Israel for so long, but I realized that I actually don't know much about that particular. So how far are the uh, the sect to which your family belonged to, let's say, what we call in Hebrew the Mitnachalim, like in the way that they believe, um, not in the way that they live, but in the way that they believe. Same beliefs. Same same beliefs. Very yeah. similar. I'm from Southeast Jerusalem, so okay. uh, I grew up in a place that have a very similar uh, beliefs as the people who lived in the settlements. Got it. I I do believe that. I mean, obviously, everything is a version of whatever the truth, in fact, is, right? There's no, I mean, everything is a heuristic to an extent. Everything is kind of like a, like, it can't be the thing, because if it's the thing, then you are the thing. And if yeah. you're looking at the thing, then you have to look at it from some kind of a perspective. And I guess our perspectives as humans, have, it divides into all those. So that actually uh, connects nicely with what I wanted to ask you about art, which is that, you know, the contrived question that artists are asked all the time is, is it coming from you? You know, that question is very, it's very common. And I, I, my perception of it as someone who's, you know, art adjacent, like I'm, you know, I, I dabble, but I'm not an artist, like not in, that, in this sense. And, and uh, uh, my sense is that there's like a, there's something and then we are, the, it, it creates through us in a sense. But sometimes it does feel that we have more to say on the subject than it, and sometimes it has more to say on the subject than us. So I guess the, the, the specific question would be, how much of your creative process, what is the pie here? Like how much of it is divided between, like, between it and you, or is it more you, or is it more it, if you even understand what I'm asking? I think we are all um, type of messengers 
of that it that we call God or um, um, higher power. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, I I never tested. I don't feel like I'm. Uh, I don't. I don't create in order to. Um, oh, I'm the messenger now. I I I I I look at it in a very narrow way. Like that's how I feel. That's how I want to see. Um, I'm trying not to. Or not always. Uh, to dig into why do I have those thoughts? Why do I have to do? What is my purpose? And I, I'm not always there. You know, I'm not always asking the question. Is about the purpose of it. Is mm. it me? Am I some kind of a messenger of you, some? You kind show of up. A, yeah, I, 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 I um, um, I'm, I'm trying to not. No, sometimes I do dig into questions. I'm like. What is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? Why, you know? But I'm trying not because uh, it just, it just, uh, you know, to fuck up with my brain is is just give me headaches sometimes. So I just like to get it out and and look at it. And sometimes I hate that, and sometimes I like it. Like you know, like most artists, you know. Yeah. So uh, this is something that you because obviously it has a deep component to who you are. It's not just that. You do this because it it pays the bills. You do this because it's an expression of what you 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 feel the urge to do this, and then the the skill kind of like benefits the thing, right? I have you have you felt that you know um, that you're about like you drown, like you 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 have to get your drown, like you like drown, drown, like yeah. like drowning, like you have to get your oxygen and breathe. So if I don't create, that's how I feel. <laughs> you, you literally yeah. drown. Yeah, I I I I I have to create. I don't I don't feel like I want to. It's not about want. It's not about um, I want to say something. Is I don't know how not to do it. It's a uh, it's a uh, I. I you know, I was I was I was uh, vacationing now. I was uh, three weeks out of uh, the state, and I had few moments where well, I was drawing and I and they created in my own way in different spectrum and different and different medium. But but I I felt that that I have a pain that I that I I just have to do it, and not for the aesthetic of it, for for to to to, to breathe. It's like it's it beyond want to create it's it's um i don't know how not must. to do it it's a you must, must. It's, it's yeah a, it's a must thing yeah yeah no interesting doubt. i actually i well i guess i i didn't hear that answer before but i haven't considered that maybe this is just that which is just there's no other way basically no no nothing i don't i don't even know uh you know even even when i was a kid i i was i was sitting in class and teacher is talking and now i want to draw something I saw last night on TV or a face of someone and there's nothing that could stop me. And that's why I was so bad at school because I was only wanting to do that instead of anything else. So um, I was always drawing at school, always, always. So, so you started as a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was very aware to my art, to, my, to me drawing. Uh, when I was, uh, I would say 14, and um, and and I was always drawing everywhere a lot, and I I you know it's to draw. So a lot a lot of people can really stop you, you know. You, 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 yeah, it's you in the pencil. Yeah, it's you in the pencil or whatever. So um, I was always doing that with with no limitation, um, with not even even thinking no i cannot do it now okay so that that basically establishes one of my questions which is that you, you never you never you never really had a moment of like should i do this should i or maybe you had did you have a moment in which like should i do this as a career or it just became very obvious very i always do that i was uh so career it's 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 a different it's a different layer of it you know um because because um uh, the thoughts was always: Is it going to be a career? Is it is it a hobby? Am I good enough? I'm still asking this question: <laughs> If I'm good enough uh, to do more and make more art, and and uh, but um, uh, it, 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 it's a different layer of the question, you know. Um, no, I guess I career. guess it was there. I'm not even trying to go that when, deep with it. Like, was no, there a no, moment what, in which you had to decide? No, 
No. It just, things just happened. I did not plan anything. Um, when I was when I was drawing, I never thought about oh I want to be a painter and I would no I, I I didn't have any big dreams even when I you know moved to the state when I was 22 I I didn't come here with any big dreams um, I came here because uh, I love LA and I like what I see and I wanted to paint and I started to sell one painting and then you sell the second one it's like Oh fuck! I like I like that. Let me just continue, and I just things just start to build up. Um, dreams came along the way, and goals came along the way. But it it's not that I had a certain specific plan to do something. Things just just happened, and um, and. But obviously, you know, for most people, or at least the way they feel, most things don't just happen. Like they feel they always well, have to. I work my ass off, right? I push so hard, but I never had a plan. I never had a set plan. What do I do on what I want to do when I'll be a big boy? You know, I, I, I never had, I want to be this. I want to be artist. It's not that I wanted to be artist. I, I, I just wanted to get a certain project. So I pushed so hard to do it. And then I needed to make some money from a certain person. I pushed so hard to do it. I, I never put a title title on it you know um but look i i'm i'm a very hard worker you know i i, I don't sleep much um I'm, I'm, i think a lot i i i i communicate with a lot of people i always push uh, very hard just to make sure that i will be able to keep create till till forever you know so basically the qualities that are required i guess for a successful career in anything which is networking, uh, working a lot, and keep getting better at whatever it is that you do. All those qualities were already ingrained in you. So I guess it just kind of, success I, basically just tagged along. I, uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's, you know, I always wanted to get better in art. I wanted, I, I wanted to get, to be a better painter. Um, I wanted to be able to deliver my emotions and my message um, uh, better um, than what I was before. I was always looking, um, I was always looking at my work a year ago and, and, and two years ago, always comparing. And, um, and, and I was always wanted to get better than what I was. And, and I, I do that even today, you know? Um, so, um, I think the idea of, getting better the thoughts of getting better um is a personality because i was doing that with everything i've i've done in my life um, um i just don't like staying in the same spot for too long <laughs> uh, that, that that that's the one that will either get you in trouble or it will make you fly to the moon that's, yeah 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 is there a fundamental difference in how you approach work now than how you approach it let's say 15 20 years ago Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah. I guess in and, the sense of like, well, okay. So let me, make, let me make it a little bit more distinct. I guess that's a very general question. I, I, I mean, in the sense that, I mean, the obvious things are, you're more picky with what you choose to do. You don't necessarily do things for money now. You do them more because you want to create. Maybe once in a while, yes. Those are the obvious things. I guess for me, the question is more around, like because we talked about it a little bit off camera and you said that you show up, uh, you, you kind of, whatever feeling grabs you, you, you focus on uh, portraits a lot in recent years, is it, or just basically months or? Uh, those portraits behind me, I uh, started um, in the past uh, three to two years, yeah, two to three years. So, so sometimes you have like a, I guess a collection or a series that is kind of brewing inside of you and you, let it out. But then sometimes you said that you would just, you know, it's right behind us and I'll show some real of that, but there's, you would go with some like, almost like street art and more like things you would see like almost on the street, but with like a message or sometimes it's just whatever people do. So you, you basically play, play around. So I guess for me, the question is this uh, process, I will call it, that you're going through all the time, do you notice that there's a pattern or do you just not even involve yourself with it? You don't even, it doesn't matter. It's whatever actually comes and whatever you feel comfortable with and that's what you do. 
I don't care. I just whatever comes. I'm very jealous. I, <laughs> I, I wake up every day, different mood. Seriously, I'm very, um, maybe now when I'm talking, I look like I'm balanced. I'm not, bro. I'm so up and down. I get here to the studio sometimes depressed as fuck, and I'm just going crazy on my art. Um, I, 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 I have a very dark um, uh, places in me, and, um, and, and I just never, never think about the end results when I start to create. I, um, um, it, it blocks my inspiration. It blocks everything in me. I do not think about anything when I want to create. I just go with whatever I have in my stomach. And I have such a, so many shitty art, <laughs> so much bad stuff because of that, you know? But um, it, it's, it's I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to do, to do it different. I, I can work on plans, obviously, and, and plan a nice piece for, but um, this, is, this is the business side of it. If we're talking about the creation side of it, I, I'm a very mojo moment now person. Um, I, uh, I, I create with what I have right now in the moment. But this is something we actually, this is a question I really wanted to ask you. And then you touched on it when we were setting up, uh, for example, in editing, uh, or, uh, you know, any, especially with, with processes that take a little longer, you know, movies, um, there's those ups and downs because there's the project and then you feel different in different days. And it's funny because I walked in and literally you, you told me this, which is like, you know, you start a piece and sometimes it takes you like 50 hours or more. And sometimes you feel different during, during the time that you're working on it. And how does this, what you're telling me now, which is like whatever it is in the moment, tie into the larger picture of like, well, this piece is trying to become something. So maybe it doesn't necessarily matter that much how much I feel right now because it needs to be a certain thing. Or I started a lot of pieces and never finished them. <laughs> really? It doesn't drive you crazy? It is. That, okay. It is. Um, um, I feel bad about that. You know, um, I, I, I have a bunch of different pieces that I started very good and I finished them so bad because I was in a different mojo when I, when I, it just took me too long. And I have a lot of pieces when I look back, I look at them and I'm like, what, what happened to me in the middle of the process? So it's, it's not everything is perfect. You know, um, um, I wish my life looked like my Instagram page, but <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a feature? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, a, um, that's, that's a great slogan. <laughs> um, yeah. w when you came to LA, was your connection with Israel always stayed strong? I actually know nothing about that, that part of you. So like, is that your connection in, with Israel is still strong? Do you have family there or do you pretty much? My relationship with Israel is uh, like a relationship with an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> uh, you know, I love Israel. I seriously, I love this country. It's a fucked up country that I love. You know, it's uh, that crazy ass girlfriend that you had and you still like her, but you know, she's crazy. So Israel <laughs> to me is, uh, uh, I'm not that, um, in touch with so many things going on. I, I'm, I'm, I have a great family and everything. You know, I, I have I had a great childhood. I have no complaints on anything that happened to me in the past in Israel. I love my past, uh, everything about my past. I'm so thankful. Israel has been shifted a little bit lately and, uh, and it's kind of sad to see it, but... Um, you, you mean, I'm, I'm assuming for the worst, in your opinion? Yeah, there's a, 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 don't feel bad. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't know, maybe some people it infuriates them, but I feel very similar. I mean, I left Israel because I had this very strong um, feeling that it was like suffocating me. And there was something about the culture that I felt was, uh, I felt the culture was missing something, which is obviously very condescending, but I realized you're not going to change them. I mean, you, the only way for me to do it is just to 
go and explore what works for me. And in that sense, I guess I uh, I agree. It's it's you know it, it, there is there is the sense that uh, for some reason there's like a deterioration of that fabric. But I have to admit that I'm not there. So all I know is like when I go to visit there, like every few years. So I don't I don't you know I'm not, my my sister is actually a diplomat and she lives here now for a few years. But they love. Israel. They love the country. They, you know, they have a whole thing there, and uh, they're planning to go back. And to me, it's just unfathomable. But uh, so, yeah, I think the ex-girlfriend uh, uh, example is a like metaphor. It's it, again. It's still. I, I still love Israel. It just um, um, not going to be my uh, number number one uh, priority uh, family vacation right now. Um, you know. Um, I'm it, it, it just it, maybe because I grew up over there and I'm trying to see other places in the world I'm trying to um, um, learn other cultures you know I, I love Israel I love Israelis I love everything about that it just it just um, um, I don't I don't really have the need always to 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 you know to go there and, and visit and um, no but, uh, I, I feel very similar to that you know when I was uh, when I first met you we, we met you through a mutual friend through Ariel and uh, uh, immediately, I was obviously struck by the art. I'm sure everybody d- has this that, this experience with your art. Uh, but then you, I immediately thought, wow, it, there's something very interesting about you. And I don't mean it in like a pandering way. I mean like this. There's, there's different. I mean, I know artists, and some of some are more, first of all, open to the world. Like they're more communicative. Some of them are very closed. Um, but you seem to be very available. I might be wrong about that. I don't know. You seem to be very available to engage with people who are trying to understand or t- drawn to your art. It's not just a matter. It doesn't seem like it's just a matter of like you know uh, a way to sell it. It's it seems like it's ingrained in who you are as a person that you want to engage also with human beings. And uh, one of the first things that uh, that. Uh, cause, because, oh, okay, so now I remember how I had this mis- misapprehension. The project that Ariel was working on had to do, had to do with PTSD, which was like, so I immediately, obviously, I assumed the obvious thing, which is like the, you know, you kind of were sent into this art through, you had PTSD and you sent through, the, through uh, either the army or something else. And, um, and then I realized, talking to you a couple of times, that well, first of all, what you just said, which is, no, this was just something that happened to you from childhood, and maybe those things were just actually ripples that maybe even almost deterred you from doing what you're doing. Yeah. Is there, first of all, just so I have it clear in my head, is that, do you feel like you, you did go through some traumas in the army, or this is not even on your radar of things? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and is your art influenced by it at all? Or? Um... Some of it, I I believe so. Yeah, I I've, I've been created a lot about um, years ago about my uh, uh, time at the military. Um, if it's still influenced and if it's still affecting, maybe <laughs> I think it's affect every piece of me. Um, uh, but I, it's very hard for me to tell you this piece. Is, it, it's very hard to tell. I think I think in you know our or past and our traumas, and a lot of people went through it, traumas. It, it this is kind of makes you what you are, and 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 a lot of pieces of me are a part of this trauma for the good and for the bad. Um, so the answer is, is is yeah some of it yeah yeah and and there's a, and obviously because that that's your way of expressing yourself. I mean, there's healing in it, but also, but like for example. Uh, I might be misreading it, and this is like a very dangerous game to play when you're trying to, you know, pretend like you understand the art to the face of the artist. But like what I've noticed is that um, in the eyes, there's uh, there's almost like a resigned um, power that understands something and and makes it not disappointed, but it's almost like it's like that's not what they expected to see in the world. I don't know if this is a too 
But like I'm seeing it here, I'm seeing it, like I'm seeing it, this is you, right? Is this a... The one, uh, the cool, yeah. yeah, it's me when I was old. <laughs> when you were old, yeah. <laughs> Am I, is this, do you feel like, again, I know, I understand that like analyzing your own art is something you don't do. I guess I'm just thinking out loud. I think I'm always trying to find the, what is the, what is the striving force? And I think with you, I already got the answer, which is like, it was always in you. There's not, you can't know anything else. It's just what must happen. Uh, are those elements, again, apparent to you at all? Because you, you said that sometimes you do think about it. Do you ever step back and you kind of look at the collection and say, oh, like it tells you something? Or again, this is not something. Yeah, that... of course. You know, um, I'm, yeah, it, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, do you feel that you're, like a small, tiny detour, do you feel that you are changed since you had family, children? Yeah. <laughs> In what way? Uh, less colors. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <That's good>. um, <sighs> ma maturity. Mm. Yeah. I... Um, uh, it changed in in a way, um, but not because of my kids. Uh, it's because um, the whole purpose of, or the, the whole thing about, like, how do I look at the world today? Um, I look at the world from a perspective of many people, but also a parent. Um, as so someone, responsibility. The responsibility, the, the, the being, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more than just responsibility. But uh, look, I, I, I'm trying really hard to be a good dad, you know, and, and, and that, that means in, in many aspects, you know, on, on, on providing them enough attention, enough time um, as a person who is very uh, focused on himself, you know, um, um, so these being, trying being a good father is, uh, is, uh, same as trying to be succeeding, you know, try to succeed with my art. It's, it's, I'm trying to put the same energy in it. And, and, and it's not easy because, uh, because, you know, I, it, you, you, you find yourself sometimes in the very late hours at the, at the studio and, you don't see your kids for like two days, you know, three days. And, and, um, uh, my wife is at home sometimes she, she, you know, she, she's, uh, uh, she has a lot from this. Like she, she does it. She's there for them when I'm not there. So, um, uh, my kids, my family are definitely affecting everything I do. Um, and, and, yeah, yeah. Were you, did you have a good childhood? I had a great childhood. That is so rare to yeah. hear. I had That's amazing. Great, I had an amazing childhood. I'm coming from a very good family. I had a very, I, I, I grew up in a, an amazing neighborhood, but Southeast Jerusalem, I saw, the reason I'm saying I had a great childhood because I'm very, um, I don't have regrets. I'm a, I'm at a point in my life when I have a lot of appreciation for everything that happened to me the way I grew up. Um, I, I grew into the conflict of um, Israelis and and the Arabs in Israel. I I, I grew in the middle of it, and um, I had a lot of questions in the past. I. I was very upset on different things in the past, and and I think and I think through the years, I started to um, stop blaming my past for my fuck ups, and and that's why I'm and I'm, I'm in a very good place where I I'm okay with everything that I did and happened to me, and I don't have any regrets, and that's why I'm saying that. Uh, and I truly believe that that I'm in a, that that I had a great childhood. Um, um, so you had the right doses doses of 
whatever you needed to get. I was not there always. For many years, I was very upset with the family, with the place I grew up, uh, with with both sides, you know, and and no more. I'm, you know, I'm I'm not there anymore. So it seems like you you leaving a lot of it out though, because it's like because it you doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. It doesn't matter. Um, I had. For so many years, I asked so many questions about the past, and and I think it happened in one night where I just got a slap in my face, and I'm like, and this is my kids are a part of it. Um, when I'm when when I just I just don't care about shitty things that happened to me in the past, and. Um, I'm living everything behind and I appreciate and respect and and I know it sounds sometimes like um, um, maybe a mood or right now you're appreciated but somebody I I, I, I don't I, I I have I, I really believe that I have uh, a great I had a great childhood and I had a great past I love my lo my life right now um i really like my life and i really like what i do and there is no reason why i would like why i would hate my past so oh no i don't mean like hate you and also well, I, i agree with you completely that there's a state from which the appreciation or the version you have of whatever it is that happened in the past is conclusive like yeah. you put it to rest yeah no i agree there's like there's a point i i also grew up with a lot of you know turmoils and anger and violence and all that stuff and then At a certain point, you just have to, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying there are no, no more uh, things to, to handle, but definitely I, I'm 100% with you in the fact that you can't let what happened to you dictate what will happen, which again, sounds so trite, but it's so true. Like, as far as I'm concerned, it's that we should be aware of history, even in the, in the most broad sense of humanity. We should be aware of history But we shouldn't let that, like, I actually, I'm not, I, and, you know, this is, I, I think, like, 99% of people would disagree with me. But, like, I actually don't think that if you, if you don't know history, it will repeat itself. I think what repeats itself is the patterns that are in us now. And being aware of something that happened, first of all, doesn't always stop you if you're emotionally hijacked. So it doesn't matter. The thing you want to take care of, as far as I can tell, is how you feel right now. And, you know, like in meditation, you, if you do it enough, you notice it very quickly that the moment constantly becoming a new thing, it constantly arises. And like you're saying, like with, with this process that you go through in art, which is you just, you put your emphasis on whatever in fact is going on, you allow yourself, you surrender to it in a sense, and it just kind of happens. And, and that's the best way to be. And so I'm a hundred percent agreeing with you. Uh, and, it, and, and I guess for me, it's, You're right. The context, the 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 temptation to define define uh, people or paint them uh, according to what you hear happened to them in the past is always very strong. Um, and I think that for me, I, I think you answered it perfectly because it's what how the person expresses what their past is right. more important than right. what right. actually happened because uh -huh. you know that everybody has their versions basically mm -hmm. so um but that's that's amazing to hear that you had an amazing childhood and that's how you view this it's uh it's very encouraging because you don't hear that a lot anymore especially if we seem to belong in this weird generation where we experience some of that old world and some of the new world and i think that there's new kinds of pain now but if there's certain types of pain that seems to me Or maybe just because I'm becoming an old geezer and just like, you know, I like to <laughs> feel like I'm being uh, all wise. But I do feel that there's certain types of pain that are no longer uh, a thing. They're no longer available. They're, they're, there's different kinds. And I'm sure maybe even worse, I don't know. But for the most part, I feel like there's certain things that, well, they were, they were put to rest. And, yeah. and I'm happy that they were put to rest. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel... What, what do you... I'm going to change pace a little bit. Uh, what do you feel about this whole... Because you always live in this flux. You're successful. You do what you love. You have a family that you love. So uh, for lack of a better, like in the, most, uh, simple, in the most simple terms, you're set, right? Obviously, it's like a gross exaggeration, uh, but you know what I mean. Like, 
So from somebody's perspective who does what he loves, who, who has the things in place, and uh, I think part of actually having a full life is also having the right amount of challenge at the right amount of pace so you can actually handle it and it puts you in this happy place in which you're still overcoming things. So it seems even that you have. Uh, from that perspective, do you feel that something fundamental, like people always talk about this thing with the pandemic that now it feels like a new world, like something truly big is shifting. And you know, people say this for different reasons. Some people just love to believe this from a spiritual perspective. Some people, uh, they, their life was just like, oh, you know, shit. So now we kind of scrambled some things and it feels like there's an opportunity for something new. But it does feel to me too, that there's something new something different what's your take on this do you, do you feel something shifted or it's all kind of it's all the same thing just in a different um it's uh um a whole interesting topic actually um no doubt <laughs> no doubt um something is changing something big is happening um absolutely yeah. How, how do you feel it? Do you feel it in what you create? Do you feel it from the way that people talk? Do you, what's the main... I feel it in every aspect in my life. I feel it through the family. I, I feel it through the art world. Los Angeles, when I travel, um, I, I feel it everywhere. Um, even when sometimes I'm trying to create about certain things that got nothing to do with that, I I I I, I had a whole show about uh, it, it's called Welcome to America, and that show is talking about the way I see what is going on right now um and and welcome to america just uh you know it's not a welcome only to america it's a welcome to earth actually um definitely something is happening and we are it's biblical like we are witnesses to to evolution revolution of the human race you know it's it's beyond than than a pandemic what's pandemic pandemic is maybe 0.0001 percent of what is really happening around yeah no it definitely feels like like this is just a, a tiny like on the surface of something much much bigger uh and the signs even for me i i, I was actually thinking about it, like how can you can you quantify this like what's the thing i think here? it's fascinating and terrifying at the same time. But if you're talking about biblical proportions, then, yeah, you know, you know obviously I, it's going to be terrifying and fascinating at well, the same you time. Know, and, uh, well, you know, the Bible like to talk about a lot of bad things, but also good things. You know, I, I believe... You mean the end of days kind of thing? No. 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 I, well, I believe in redemption. Mm. I believe that the good will come. But I believe that we ha we, we, we're going to go through so much more shit before it will come. I, 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 I have these beliefs that uh, we just started with, with this um, a whole terrifying things. I, I believe it will get worse. Sorry for my uh, negativity tonight. Well, but, you're not, you're but not, it's not listen, only tonight. Listen, you're not but, wrong. It's like, a, as we're know, talking the new, uh, the new stand, what is it called? The, the, the thing is like, everybody are sick. It's crazy. It's like, it's, you know, know five people. it's, 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 it's remind me the, the movie, um, uh, don't look up where, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, yell, we gonna die. So, I don't think we all gonna die. <laughs> Some of us will die, um, but I truly believe that it it will lead or something will happen, and the good will come. I believe in redemption. I believe I I'm a God believer. Okay. Um, some people will call it God. Some people will call it some something else. But I really believe that the good will come, and I believe that um, whoever whoever will stay will be a witness to a, a good redemption that looks like paradise. I... Well, so how do you, how do you, if you don't mind me asking, how do you view this, the good will come? So like it's a place in which we have the perfect balance between, again, challenge and how do you view, or you, 
Like I can't. I have a hard time imagining what would be. Um, I believe that what we are chasing now not going to be what the, the next generation, the next generations are going to chase. Um, I, I, I believe that the human race will have more balance, um, that we're not going to have that um, major difference between that 1% and the whole world, you know, that, 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 you know, there's so many poor and people that's suffering. I, I do believe that we will have this balance. Um, I believe that uh, money uh, will get back to be just a tool and not a goal. Um, I believe that um, um, uh, people will be happier. Um, so do you believe those things will be ingrained in humans more more often than not. Yeah, than, yeah. Okay. I believe the human race will be, I don't know if in our life, you know, I, I, I don't know, but I believe the human oh, like race be way longer will, than you think, experience, you? will experience the good that we hope for. Um, this is my beliefs. I, um, I, I truly like, believe I like that belief. Do you think Italians are gonna come and help us or? I don't know who, <laughs> I don't know who. It doesn't look good right now, I can tell you that. Uh, but I think we have to go to the bottom of, like, it has to go so bad. And then... Really? Do you think that that's a necessity? Like, it's almost like a cleansing, almost like a... No, I think it's bad what's happening. I don't think it's necessity. I don't think it has to, we have, we have to go through this. But do you feel like we're inflicting it to a large extent on ourselves? I don't know. I mean, the most fundamental suffering, like the, uh, the average Joe. It's almost like, uh, you know, the most, uh, the mo the mo imagine the most, you know, mediocre, like middle class life. Uh, it, even there, like there's a, there seems to be a lot of unnecessary suffering, which induce obviously by our minds. Do you feel that that can be to a large extent eradicated by like a new perception of like the next generation? I, I, I truly believe that things are planned. Oh, wow. Um, that, that's, a, that's an interesting statement. Yeah. So planned by higher source, whatever. I don't think it's, it, it, I'm not even talking about the God. I'm talking about humans. Oh, you think there's like, like organizations that kind of plan the thing and... Fuck the hell yeah. Hmm. So that's obvious to you. So like... So like, clear to me. So, uh, but do you, okay. So, first of all, just to be clear, I don't disagree with that statement, but I always like to play devil's advocate. There's a, there's always a tendency. You know, the whole debate between the sides of believe, like ultra conspiracy theorists, who just you know everything is planned by some, everything are, is moved by some puppeteers, to the other side, which are trying to kind of do the whole balance thing and say, well, you know, never attribute something to a conspiracy that you can attribute to um, in, uh, incompetence, right? That's the line. Um, but I think that the truth, like at least in the last three to four years, I want to say, I noticed a very tremendous shift in my own perception where all of a sudden, I, oh, actually, I remember the exact moment, which uh, just blew my mind. So I'll share it with you. I, uh, it was Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. And, you know, Alex Jones sounds just bunkers. He just sounds insane, right? So, like, I know who he is, and I, I you know, I, I heard him here and there over the years, and I'm like, this guy is so fucking hilarious. But, but then he was on Joe Rogan, and all of a sudden they started listing, Joe started listing uh, all the things that Alex Jones said since the 90s, and he, he listed them one by one that we now found out to be true. And I was like, wait a second, that's like 80% of what he said is fucking true. I was like, what is happening? What planet am I on that what Alex Jones is saying is predominantly true? And you can't argue with that. Those are like facts. He was talking about uh, Epstein. He was talking like, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. What's happening here, man? Yeah. And you know what? And it's, it's funny because you still have to go and do your thing throughout the day. There's not a lot that really changes you in the immediate sense. 
But now I realize, I only realized it later that a bomb was detonated in my brain. I, I have a completely different filter now for yeah. what I see in the news. And it's not like I was completely kind of like living in this la-la land in which I thought that nobody's, you know, twirling mustaches and trying to achieve a goal with a lot of power. Is that I was always thinking, well, you know, at the end of the day, most people, even with a lot of power, can't be that different that, I guess, what my goals would be if I would have that much power. And I have to say, I'm not so sure about that anymore. But even with all of that on the table, you don't think that there are, there's a substantial uh, percentage of people with serious power that are not like that, that are actually interested in, in you know, well, like, again, Elon Musk, I guess, is an, it may be an outlier, maybe is a good example. And again, I, I, today, I, I never know anymore. I'm sorry for our rambling, but I, I don't know anymore today w even about that because a lot of people seem to be upset with him as well, which to me is very confusing. But it, it seems to me that it's very possible that some very competent people can be good. Yeah. And yeah, do I, I do believe so. Okay. I, I, I do believe that some people out there are disagree. I think they are um, uh, probably they, they have their own issues with this. Um, but I, I also believe that this is like a whole, like a whole world and life that we are not even, not, no, not no idea even, about. cannot even imagine. I agree. What yeah. is it? I think, I think we, we live in the same, we breathe the same air. We probably stepping on the same floor but we still live in different dimension, like, like not what, in a movie, like, 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 like not in a movie, different dimension, you know, like, like in a, in a, like we know and we see totally different things than, than these people. And, uh, I, I do believe just some, some people out there are, are okay or good or call it however is that, but, um, um, whatever is happening is, you know what? It, it's it's. I don't even know why to call it my beliefs. It's not even beliefs. It's this. This is this is. It's been proved so many times. It just it's. I think it's it it it. The question is, how do you do? You, like, where do you choose to look at? <laughs> but I guess to me, you know, I'll be honest. I guess to me, the hardest thing to. Uh, it's. I'll tell you what it is for me. For me, it's the fact that. In the end of the day, you know, like uh, George Carlin had this uh, bit about w w America and freedom. And he was talking about, like, let me tell you about your goddamn freedom. Uh, you have 13 types of bagels, but you have two political parties that both work for the same, right? That's kind of like yeah. the shtick. And I love George Carlin. He was a genius, fucking amazing. But I strongly disagree with that statement because in the end of the day, hey, the 13 bagels is what happens in my life. So I'm happy I have that choice. It's not like, I never understand the anger towards the, the like, well, you know, they're blocking you. No, the options you have available to you are what they are. Now, maybe you would have more options if things would be, you know, more like true trickle down economy and some, you know, some, some true paradise of economical structure. I don't know, maybe you would have that. But as far as I can tell, I, we live in America. And I personally love this country and I like, I, and I'm looking around, I'm like, even if those people, I mean, obviously if we're talking about like, you know, an island of pedophile, like, like that stuff, that, that's fucking, no, like, that's fucking evil, right? That's no. But I'm saying if they, you know, twist things here and there and they make like, instead of $2 billion, they make $7 billion. I don't understand the anger of the average person on the street, which is like, it didn't take anything away from you. Like you can still do the thing you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think the anger is where they make more money than us or, um, no freedom. This is, uh, I don't think this is the anger. Um, I think, I think, um, the anger comes from, let's say I'm going to let you for, your entire life have two types of chocolates. Two types of chocolates. And you love those chocolates. 
And they're like, Tom, I like the white and I like the black chocolate. And I like both of them. And I live with those two chocolates an amazing life. But then you realize after 30, 40 years that someone hid from you 20 other dogs. But I didn't know about them. Okay. The moment you know about them, from the moment you know about them, that's where your anger will start. So the question, the question that comes up is, um, what happened to the people that started to ask questions and realized that certain diseases were not supposed to happen? Oh, that, that certain things that we did in school were not that necessary. That certain, like, look, I like my life too. I, I, I don't really have a lot of complaints about anything, seriously. I'm just asking questions. I'm asking questions about what's going on here, what's going on there. And you know what? Look, at most of the day, honestly, I look at my own plate. I'm not one of these people who think about the poor people in Africa every day. But let's stop for just a moment. Because most of the day, I, sh I care only about my shit, only about my kids, only about myself. I don't stop in every corner and think about the homeless people in LA. Truly, I don't. But let's stop for a moment. And let's think about a reality, just, just for a moment. And not think about our life, about our creative, and about, oh, wow, I'm an artist, and I'm cool, I'm fucking making money. Let's, let's let, let, just for a moment. What if, what if these, all these poor people that fight every day to feed their kids, that every night are crying at home, could have a different reality. So the question is not about me. I'm, I'm, I just told you, I don't have any, any complaint about my past. I just, told, I, I like my life. I have a great wife, great kids, great family, seriously. But the question is, some people that are living next to us don't have it. And they don't have it not because they're stupid or something. They don't have it because I believe someone took it from them. And what about them? This is the question that, that raised and brings a lot of anger from different people. So if most of the day I'm thinking about it, no. But he brought it up. And, and, um, and, and why... Why do we have to see so many people with mental illness out there? Why do we have to see so many poor, homeless people in the streets of Los Angeles? And I'm not complaining about violence and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking a question. Why do we have so many poor people? I'm not talking about Africa and South America, no. I'm, here, now, bro, right here. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Right here, I'm working here. I see them every day. What about them? What about the next generation? So my kids are going to school. There is a good chance that one kid out of their school probably will be homeless. How can we avoid it for the future? What do we do today to avoid that for the future? What is the system doing to avoid that? So I think this is why people, pe people are not always thinking about right now what's happening. People are thinking about, about the future. Um, I, 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 I have a lot of um, uh, disagree with, with what kids has to go through right now with schools, you know? Um, um, so like what specifically? Or you this is not something you want to expand on. I, why, and you know what, it's more like, um, what kind of post-trauma this generation is going to have from staying home for so long? Uh, but, okay. This, this, is, this, is, this is a question I'm asking. Of um, course, there is a bunch of different thoughts to it and, and why and stuff like that. But I, I, you know, I had a show 
uh, calls Welcome to America. And the Welcome to, Amer Welcome to America show is talking about the gap that has been created between, between us people. And, and we, we, we started, like, society, humans start to hate each other because of different opinions, because of that. And, um, and, and I'm asking, what's going to be? If this is the situation right now, what's going to happen next three years from now? People with different opinions are not even going to talk to each other anymore. Which is essentially what's happening a lot in the silos and social uh, networks. But so, first of all, I, I fully that's that's a very um, succinct way of thinking about it. So I do appreciate that point. It, it is true that when you think about it from the perspective of not just you and I, but what is taken away from the people who are the most the worst off, then it is infuriating. I I just have the sneaking suspicion that when most people complain about that stuff. It's because they want to be heard. They don't actually care about what happens to other people. You're right. That's my impression of it. You, you, you're right. Yeah. Seriously, you're right. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't really um, create um, for others. No, you might. I, I, I'm I, not. I'm not talking about but, you. But I'm, in, I'm in asking. The loop. The, I put it like when question. you talk to people. When you hear people like black, I'm not talking about you. I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe yeah. yes. Maybe no. I have no yeah. idea. I'm saying that for the most part, when you hear people say things on social media, it's more, it's very obviously for them to say something. Because you know? it's very trendy yeah. to be that person. But that's infuriating like, too. You but, know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's like, unless you're willing to actually stand up and do something about it. So like, obviously there has to be some kind of a level of like a social outrage in order for anything to happen. That's, that, that, that is a good thing. And, and a lot of things change that way. Sometimes people get thrown under the bus, but hey, progress, right? Um, but I think in the end, it's th that goodness that you're talking about at the, at the tail end of this, whatever this is, I think in the end, it, will, it won't come from God. It won't come from aliens, even if they're there looking at us, all of them. I, it has to come from us. It's almost, I see it like the situation of the egg. Definitely will come from us. The chick has to hatch the egg but from the inside. You can't have anybody, because uh, you won't survive the external space. Of course, it's not that like yeah. I see God right now coming out from God. It's like, okay, guys... I decided to stop it. The yeah. good will come. Absolutely not. It has to come from humans. The, the human race has to change <laughs> and, and, somehow. And, and I agree with you. We should, we should think about structures that basically help mitigate that. And actually, th this is an interesting thought. I, that uh, at first I thought it was only metaphor. And the more I thought about it, I realized, no, that's literally like if you look at it from the, like the most bird's eye view, it's true. So Terence McKenna had this idea, which I think he was, I don't know, I think he was quoting McLuhan or something. I don't know. Maybe it was his or maybe he was quoting someone. And then, uh, do you, who, you know who he was? Terence McKenna was this uh, brilliant, very outspoken uh, explorer and writer. And he was big on talking about psychedelics and, you know, he was from that. But he's like one of the most eloquent speakers in history. Like he's one of those like people who can paint with words, right? And one of his things that he was saying is that like the only that that line which I, I believe was Dostoevsky beauty will save the world which there was a different version of it which is like the artist will save the world and what he basically put a little bit of like a practical emphasis there in which he said well think about what's going on you have the more like artistic as the artist the more they need this crazy chaos in order to create so obviously there's gradation, right? The ones that are like the, 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 the crazy ones, the want to talk to themselves and, and then create in between. Um, they have to usually live in places that are very, like they live in the, in the slums. They live in places that are like, they have this like, and they, 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 they transform that into something. And when you do enough of this, then the next wave of order, which is like, you know, usually the hipsters and people with a little bit of money, but they kind of like that, like be seen as like this kind of like, you know, grungy. Yeah. yeah. So they, they would move in yeah. around and they would set up a coffee place or two and all of a sudden it becomes not as bad. And, you know, and then, and then and the then, price goes up. And the price goes up. <laughs> but then, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the whole, uh, Bourgeois, like then the higher, like the the higher accolade of um, uh, of society kind of moves in, like, and then it, it and then it goes right. So it's almost like, and then you have like, and then the, the the apartments are worth like millions, right? 
and then the artist can't be there anymore. So he moves to the next slum. So they're essentially almost like the front line. It's a they story almost... about Mid City. It's a story about Brooklyn. It's the story about, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's all, but, yeah. That, but what's interesting, if you really think about it, that literally happens. So you have this like front line of artists who transform this chaos into something that seems on the surface of it. Well, so what? They made this, whatever. But it moves other people to do a very large thing. So it literally pulls this wave of, of like it kind of decorates the thing behind it, right? Yeah. But the, and then we can you know we can say that the when uh, the you know the highest end of, of society moves into that we can call it whatever like now it loses its touch or whatever. But now it's more orderly. Now there's like more you know there's more wealth in it, whatever. But I agree with you that there has to be some kind of a, a system that even the people that like the artist chooses to be there, right? But there has to be some kind of a mechanism in place that we set that over time will raise the tides in such a way that even the lowest of the low won't be that low. Like the people who don't choose that should have the choice to not be on the street, I, freezing to death. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I do believe in, in, in redemption, that that's something. But what, you kept cool. saying this word redemption. What is redemption yeah. for you is like, we, 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 it's like salvation for us. It's like, it's, uh, it's the good we're days. Redeeming, <laughs> but, but that means, but redemption means we're redeeming ourselves. So there's yeah. like a, okay. So it's, yeah. it is what you mean. It is. It is redeeming. Definitely for, 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 for humans. Yeah. I, 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 I believe something will change from us. Something will 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 get change in a certain time. I don't know if it will be in just generation or the next one or the next one, but um, um, I do believe it 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 will get changed dramatically for good. Would you freeze yourself, by the way, if you could? Wow, man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because technically you can, I think, here in Santa Monica. They have oh, the shit, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they already have a few. No way. Yeah, they. People I think freezing themselves. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they only do the head right now. We we should look at. What the, is it saying about you? Like, if you freeze yourself. Yeah, first of all, like, that you have the money. Second of all. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, but but also no, but it does mean something. But also, um, I mean, I don't know what what does that say? But I mean, I would if I could afford it, and that's not. I mean, I, if I know that that's like, it. So, so what do you freeze yourself for? How many years? No, until they know how to unfreeze you, because right now they don't. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's basically, like, it's like if you know you're terminally ill or you're too old or whatever, so you basically yeah, freeze yourself. I'll do that. Yeah. The off yeah. chance that in like 50 years, you yeah. know, they can. Yeah, that would, that would be an interesting one. Because I already see there's this, um, what's his name? David Sinclair. Is it David? I don't remember his first name. I'm sorry. But something Sinclair is like this. One of the big, le biggest uh, leading experts in the world on uh, on uh, anti aging and reverse aging and all that stuff. So th there's already like a few things. He was talking about this. Um, the latest thing I saw him on was on uh, the uh, Huberman podcast, which is a neuroscientist, and they were talking about this thing that apparently is available. I asked my friend who's a personal trainer, and he said, "Yeah, subscribe to a few people." I'm like, "What? When did this come along?" It's oh, like shit. it's called NMN. That's so, so it's a thing you take cool. every day. If I show you a picture of him, he's 52. It's crazy. He looks like he looks so like cool. he's 35. I'm like, what so is cool. going on? It's so <laughs> crazy. It's like you know, we yeah. we can we might actually see 200. Look, like it, it, it's uh, well, yeah, obviously, uh, some people know the secret of um, how not to get old mentally. You know, <laughs> um, it, do you it's think been you know how to do that? Different way. I I I'm not practicing this. Um, I like getting old because I feel like I'm getting younger. Um, but um, um, you know, you know, they talk about all the breathe, breathing and Wim Hof. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a whole different Bible how to you know. But it's interesting. I'm not there. I'm, uh, <laughs> you I don't have a time for it. I'm, I'm, yeah, but I th I think that it, I think if it would be more available for people quicker, like this is what this is why the re this thing I'm telling you now is so surprising to me because that's not a thing you got to commit yourself for like a year or two and see no literally apparently you just take it every day it's just it's just a food supplement it's called nmn and you just take it every day and it somehow like 
like somehow mitigates like it, it somehow slows down aging it's like crazy i love it so I, I, i'll try it you you should <laughs> like i, I ordered I would, some like if, like, if, if 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 i don't need to change my life routine which i'm not ready for it yet i would definitely uh take some supplements to um yeah why not you know everybody wants to look better you know yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. so let me ask you a childish yeah. question if you if they actually manage to somehow reverse aging What age physically would you go back to? Wow, what a good question. You, you retain all your wisdom. Wow. Now, how do you want to feel in your body? 26, well, 18, when you're horny as fuck. What do I take fuck? with me? <laughs> what? what can I take with me? Oh, your brain's the same. Oh my God. Oh, you keep, it's like heaven. You keep your wisdom and everything you've learned. You just, your body goes down to... But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if you go back to, like, 16, you're too hormone crazy. Like, it's just, I wouldn't go to, like, 16. I'll, <laughs> I'll walk naked no. in the street, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 26. Oh, yeah. I think for me, 26. 26 um, is, like, a nice... 20, um, 20, 24, 25, 26. You nailed it, actually, with age. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about it a lot. I, I like, wasted so much time. But I think we all did. So much time. But I don't, I don't know if it's wasted. No, no, it's... bro. <laughs> you don't want to know, man. So much no, time. No, I do. <laughs> no, man, I was so stupid that age. Oh, I, I didn't know what, huh. like, I, I didn't understand anything. I, I was, just... I, 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 I spent so many years on getting high. You have no idea. And... No, so yeah, you can get into the conversation of you know, psychology. It made you what you are. And this, bro, I wasted so much freaking time on getting high a lot. Wait, you mean high weed or high? Everything. Okay. everything. I tried everything too much on too many and wasted a lot. Of Have you tried heroin? No, 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 no. Not, 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 not deadly uh, junky stuff. Okay. Um, I tried very similar things. Um, um, yeah. And so I'm assuming psychedelics and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, some of them were so much fun. Some of them were a waste. Some, sometimes I felt like junkie, you know? Um, and, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, no, cause I, I know cause I, we also touched on that, uh, when I just met you, when you said that, um, LSD was something that as we say in Hebrew, like it was a period in my life. Yeah, and but sometimes, you know, you do more and more and more. You know, I had some, some days when I was sitting on so much, you know, for like a whole week on just doing only drugs and, and, and not even doing anything. It, look, when you go, when you party, you have fun in the party. Oh, you, you, you have fun in the on. party. Yeah. You go back home. You, you party. Okay. You You can party a little bit, okay? And then you go to bed. And then, okay, you wake up. You, you have a fucking bad day, and then, which is like Saturday. And then you go through the Sunday. Then Monday, you get back to yourself. I had so many days when on Wednesday, I was still fucking high. And, oh, I'm familiar. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and those days, I'm like... It's not, a, it's, it's not from a, a perspective of regrets. It just, if I could go back, I would do something else. I would, I would push something. I would, I would definitely do something else um, and, um, and, and not getting so high and so many times. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I have to tell you that uh, For me, that's not, I mean, I also spent many, many years, I mean, I was, I, I was still like functioning and doing things, but I loved getting high uh, on different things. And it's, I just, I couldn't, be, you know, some things are just like, you can't believe that your brain can do this. And to me, that was the fascination. But obviously it also comes with, you know, whatever it is that you, the, the environments in, in which you usually take it. But that's that, what I'm saying. From the moment you're getting high, Until the moment you, okay, uh, all right, stop, let's get back. Yeah, but how much time go through? But if you if, could do otherwise, you would. What do you, you mean? You didn't because you couldn't, you couldn't bring yourself to not. 
So that, that's it literally like, couldn't be any other way. That's, that, what I mean. that's why it's stupid. It's stupid, man. Get high one night. All right, all night. Take Wait, the day you want to tell me? You want to tell me? I'm going to be super boring. I'm going to ask you something super boring. You want to tell me that you didn't get one true insight that you feel you you would not have gotten without that? No, of course not. What are you talking about? Of course, I I I I love a lot of it. I don't have regrets. I'm laughing about that. It's 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 a big it's it's a big joke in in, in my life, you know, getting high and and I'm glad I don't, I'm not there anymore, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if I could go back to 26, I would get less high and doing some earning some ex different experiences in my life. So I would, experience. I would travel more. Hmm. I would I would get to know more people. Um, I would I would like to meet more cultures, more people, getting into more relationships, not necessarily necessarily uh, females, just just like with with, with, yeah, humans. with people, understanding. Um, I was I was uh, yeah I would I, I would do more. Sorry, so I would I would do more with with humans than than getting high with myself. I can see that, and and, and people do, and I think it's a it's a. I think it's a it's a valid equivalent of traveling and tripping, because I do think that uh, the the context context of a different culture has something very psychedelic about it. Anyways, you know, I was it's smoking a, weed for okay. sixteen years. Wow, every day. Wow, every day. See, weed is a different animal, though. Every day. Um, um, I was always always had weed on me. I smelled. 16 years that's crazy well withdrawals once have sometimes been crazy. sometimes i was i was i was smoking while i'm painting from the moment i i was lighting my joint i had 45 minutes timer when no one can talk to me when i don't answer the phone when i don't want to do anything just to look at the ceiling and do nothing 45 minutes but that's weed for you 45 minutes. Me and my wife had a joke about that. We used to go out. As soon as she see me lighting the joint, she used to call the babysitter and tell her, 45 minutes, we're at home. It's not even asking. And she knew, 45 minutes. And when I was painting, I had a schedule. I had like, I, I, I managed my life with the, the weed. With the drugs I used, I met, that's how I managed my life. So I was lighting, I was, I was like getting back home from like 12 midnight or 8 p.m., whatever. From the moment I lighted my joint, 45 minutes, not communicating. Now, from the moment I'm not communicating until the moment I'm falling asleep, it could be full five hours. Wow. Not talking to people in my own box. Sometimes we, we used to go to parties, birthdays. Birthdays of friends. Tomer is with his joint. Bro, people talking to me, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and I was begging to myself to get the fuck out of this conversation, and whoever was that. So I was running away, and I was a lot with myself, too much with myself, dreaming about nothing, zero, blackout. Um, um, yeah, sometimes I was, I was very creative and this, but I really think that I create much better, much better when I have a black coffee, I have a crazy ass imagination without drugs, without weed. Um, I, I, I don't even mind to have a zip of whiskey or tequila, you know, and I can create much better than, than being on weed. Um, so to be fair, that, that you just have a different drug of choice. Yeah. It's yeah. just that like you, you won't, you know, like you won't offend me with weed because I'm, I'm like, uh, that's my, like, so actually, that age again, around 26, something happened with weed, you know, like everybody else. I, uh, I grew up in Lud, in Israel, which is like, you know, the drug capital of Israel. And it's like, yeah. And uh, so, I, you know, everything was just across the road. And I started doing, well, actually, I started doing acid way earlier when I was, I, the first time I think it was like 11 before we even moved there. Uh, and I always loved psychedelics. I always felt like there's something else. And that was my way of exploring it. And uh, so I did that throughout my teens and early 20s. And something happened at 26 or 27 that I just, weed stopped agreeing with me. 
So I guess maybe I got lucky. Like it just stopped being a thing. First of all, I felt like I'm not learning anything anymore. And I think a lot of people lie to themselves after a certain period. I think we does stop teaching you after a certain amount of time. Now, some people, don't get me wrong, develop a relationship with weed that is highly successful because of exactly how they're wired. Like obviously, I mean, Joe Rogan is a perfect example of that, right? It's like mega successful, very active guy, successful in three different domains. Incredible, found a balance, great. I have another friend who was brilliant and he, you know, but he literally can't function. But in a way that like, obviously he has a lot of pain and he has like, it, it, which of course, if you would take the time to find a way, the different way to battle it and like, it would be better, but for all intentions or purposes, that's the balance he found and he functioned and without it, he can't function. So, but I would say those people are, are very, very few. And the rest, I feel like specifically with weed, it just like, I call it a will killer. It's not even, it's not, it's not exhausting. It just kills your will. Like you, like you said, you just don't want fill in the blank. Killed everything in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Straight not, I'm, yeah. But, but I would, but yeah, but I mean, still there's, you have relationships with, obviously we don't think about it like that, but like alcohol is clearly a drug and sugar is and coffee is, they're just, I guess they're more slip in, slip out. Like they're not as like, they're not as Every sticky. Every drug pulled something out of me. Different. Mm. But even coffee does? Um, interesting. Um, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I like coffee. It kind of wakes me up. I feel more energetic yeah, with coffee. You, you found a relationship um, with it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, I, that's why I'm not... There's this... It's, it's really weird. There's this... I was very confused by this. There's this guy... Uh, man, I should really get better with names. <laughs> this is a disease. I'm so bad with names. I got to work on this, seriously. Um, especially when I'm doing a podcast, I should better know who I'm talking about. But he's this professor. Um, uh, I'll find a, uh, like a short video of his, I'll send it to you. And he's a, he's a professor somewhere, I don't know, some, and uh, clearly a very highly functional human being. But he talks openly about how heroin is his way of like disconnecting every two weeks. And that's what makes him a better person. And he talks about it openly. He was on Lex Friedman, he was on Joe Rogan. You know, I have to say to each his own, but then again, there, I would say that's not exactly true because there are some substances like heroin, for example, that they would pull more than not towards the abyss. You know what I mean? So it's like you do have to kind of consider the, the animal in the cage in that case. It's not just like all up for grabs and whoever can, but you found a nice relationship with coffee. I found, you know, a relationship with something else. And I think in the end, we all kind of live in this maze in which our brain is one thing and the world is another. And then all the things we intake and the people we have interactions with is another thing. And then we try to kind of manage all of it. So I think in the end, if you have that, I think maybe because for you, that's a lot of uh, uh, assumptions here. But I think that maybe because you have this stem in the middle of creation and something that holds you together is like a, uh, it's your identity and it's, it, it's also... It, it's it's easier to focus on a thing and be like it's a it's a thing you can grab. Yeah, right? I get lost a lot. <laughs> you do. I yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it came out as as I'm very um, controlled person who understand every movement he does and every step. No, I, I, I do I do have a lot of uh, as I said in the beginning, I have a very um, big large dark um areas in me when we're where I, I do get lost even for for a few days i'm out of it and i do even create through that and 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 um which this is more my, my, my dark sides you know um some people knows knows more about it enemy some people don't you know some people see see a very shallow or very first layer you know but um you know, even even my work, I most of my creation is about my dark side. I most of my work is is about the empty part of the glass and not the full part of the glass. I I, I paint a lot of um, emotions that comes from pain and darkness, and not necessarily my happiness in my life. You know, my happiness in my life is we can talk about it hours and my family and when you're going to see me walking my dog and my kids, you know, this is my happy life. 
but um, there is there is a very uh, deep um, <clears throat> uh, dark place where where most of this is where most of my art is coming from, and um, you know like this guy like to do this heroin and and once or two weeks. When I create, I, 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 I have a lot of moments even when I even tear down and I go crazy. I, I don't want to tell you how many, how many paintings I, I ruined and, and, and broke and threw to the trash after so many hours of work. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, set on fire some of my work. You know, I, you know it's... Uh, I, 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 there is a lot going on. I think, I, I think for, for, for me and for most artists, you know, there, there's a, so many emotions and, and just the fact that there is always emotion, it's very hard. You know, it's so hard to, that, that you always have things in your stomach, you know? So, um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that the drugs is not part of it anymore. It used to be. A big, big part of it, um, and and this is my happy part in my life that drugs are is not really drugs are not part of of my creation, and I think my 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 work became much better since then. So I do think a, a, a big part of it is maturity because you we switch with that I guess a little older into this genetic cycle, which is like we become a little softer because we want to have kids. And I think that kind of dulls the need maybe a little bit to kind of just go ape shit all the time. Because in the end, it's like, I can only look at it from the perspective of myself, but it's, it was always like this, how far can I push the envelope with whatever it is, right? Yeah. And that was, that was, the, that was that like, just full force ahead, no stops. And I... I Back then, for sure, that's how I perceived it. But I think maybe I perceive it now a little bit that way too, which is like, I think the true discoveries are made at the edges, but not in all the edges. So I think some edges basically don't really lead you to, to any, any big realizations. They, just, they were just there and you kind of experienced them. But I would never say that I, I'm not happy I experienced them. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it, no, yeah. definitely. Drugs um, are fun. This is, this is um, I, I, I always wonder if, if all those discoveries could have been made through different things in life, though. And sometimes I suspect that they could have. I mean, obviously, some things that, like, uh, have you ever tried DMT? Yeah. Okay, so some things maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, only DMT what, does what DMT does. <laughs> it's you know. it's uh if if you have you done it like a few times or you've done it like yeah a few okay uh, recent or like years 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 ago um I think the last time was um maybe three four years ago maybe four years ago how was that experience oh god <laughs> I saw God I saw God can you expand a little bit on that you can. Have you seen God? I think I have. <laughs> I saw God. I Listen, think I DMT, have. DMT. I don't want to call it a drug. Didn't do to me anything that drug did to me. DMT let me see another dimension. We are not even. Our brain, we don't even understand what our brain is capable for. This thing, this energy thing, you know, this is all buddy. This is nothing, right? This is, this is. Well, it's something. This, right? is, this, yeah. is, this is, compare, I compare yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to the depth of the energy and what our brain is capable, which we are not even using a little part of it. DMT is giving you just the idea of another dimension that we have out there, which is not an illusion. I don't, it's not an illusion. You're not, it's not a mushroom that it's not a LSD. Um, <clears throat> I had only good experiences with DMT. 
Um, um, yeah, I, I, I saw how God planned this world on a Photoshop. <laughs> It's like it's oh. like if you sit next to a graphic designer or illustrator and you see them how they create their own thing at the or the mask or the mask and that so I saw God planning this world in his Photoshop. That was my experience with the MT. Wow. It's it's uh yeah. How do you convince um someone who never done it that that this what you're saying is different? than any other person that, you know, had a wacky experience on drugs. What do you <clears> say <throat> to someone? What, what, is disting what is distinguishing that experience from anything else? You know, um, I think it's a process. I think, I, think uh, I would need to get to know the person a little bit before I will try to convince him to do that. No, let's say it's someone really close. Close? Yeah, in yeah. a second. Tell me. In a second, I can convince you. I don't know, it's got to be natural, but it's, it's not a drug. It's not a commitment for uh, an hour or two hours getting high. It's, there is not any, any, um, <clears throat> um, uh, Ref, reflectives or or downs or or you you feel kind of off a little bit after that but um it there is no it's like a plug on and off you in it and you out of it and you remember everything and you and even through that you don't really feel high you feel like i took you and put you on God's Photoshop or, or that's how I like to define it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> or put you in a different dimension. You're going to see how things been created. And you know what? I think DMT is something that most people need to see, need to try. No it's matter super, who they are. Huh? No matter who they are. Yeah, no matter who they are. It doesn't make you freak out. It's not like a, 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 an MDMA that <gasps> if you have the no, it's just you shit. It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's like <laughs> shit. You know, it's like, you know, it it no, it's easy. It's easy on you. It for the first time, first five to ten minutes, it's easy on you. If you want to go deeper, you can go deeper. That's a different story. I'm talking about a zip, two zip, like two, two. Shachtot, you know, five to ten minutes. You're not obligated to anything. It's on and off. When it's off, it's like okay, I'm okay, okay, I'm nice, okay. Oh fuck, what was it? Yeah. And um, DMT is the part that you don't know about everything. That a, a, a part, not everything. It's a little, some part that you don't we don't have in us, you know? It's, um, a, it's like, that's interesting that you said that we don't have in us because for a long time... So we I have in us. We have in us. We just, we, we from some reason, it's been hidden. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's of a flavor that you know your regular waking brain can't come up with or people will resist to this especially people who've never done it but i'm telling you there's there's a for a long time i was thinking about how to define this in a way that would express something of any kind of meaning to somebody who never tried it and i think the best i came up with is that it's it, it really is not there's those thoughts that they're like they're variations they might be like if you do acid or mushrooms or or weed or mdma you recognize, like you recognize that type. They might be souped up, like there might be versions of your thought that are more than what you usually arrive at or connections that are deeper than you usually make. But in this particular case, with the case of DMT, it is not made from the same building, building blocks that you're building on. 
it's made of a completely different material exactly. that you've never seen before. Yeah. yeah. And it's so jarring that you you like it, it, it for this obviously the speed of it with which it comes on. I mean, to anybody who doesn't know, it's like you just you just smoke this thing and then immediately you're on being enough. propelled. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a plug. Zing, like drunk. Like I mean, you're just yeah. like, what just happened? Yeah. And it's like you lived. I forget who said this. This is not mine. Somebody who said this, and I thought it was a perfect example. It's like it's like living in a house, and for for however long you've been alive, in my case, thirty eight years. Let's say I would do it today, and discovering there's a secret chamber in there that you never knew existed. So I have a different definition for it. Yeah, a blind person who've never seen it. Who've never seen life, before. Yeah, for the first time, his eyes open. Yeah. Yeah. You literally see colors like, like you've never what seen. What the fuck <laughs> is going? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Um, and yeah, this is this is this is it. Yeah, exciting. And it is very exciting. So exciting. exciting. Yeah, it's and and especially now that there's like more serious research on the matter, which on the matter, which I, is like I believe so. No, you no, know, for sure. There's like a few organizations that are taking it more seriously, and it's funny to me because sometimes I read, you know, anybody who's experienced it even once can attest immediately, but which by the way, it just blows my mind that there's some, you know, researchers that study this and they've never done it before, go home. Like the, you, you are not in, in a place to say anything about this. And case in point, I read this article from this, um, somewhere in Britain, some study was done and somebody postulated, seriously postulated, that this is just repressed, uh, be the beings that we see are repressed uh, interactions of us as toddlers with our parents before we could actually form memories. That was their explanation. I'm like, bro, do it once. It will wipe clean every any recollection of this statement you just made. Yeah. You have no idea yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. It's not- You didn't do it. It's just no, it, clearly yeah, that person yeah, has never done it. Yeah. It's like, it's not even human. There's, there's no, no way. There's no way. It's some alien shit. It's, it's what? It's some alien it's, it shit. It is. You know, actually, well, Terrence McKenna used to talk about <laughs> DMT a lot. And he said he was an art historian. And he said in one talk, they were talking about Carl Jung. And he said, you know, I, he talked about the first time he had, he had ever done it. And, you know, he, he said, I, I, I pride myself in knowing motifs and, and understanding the archetypes to a very deep degree. And I understand how it all connects to the thing. And uh, the only thing I could say for 10 minutes after I came down for, of my first DMT trip was just, I kept on repeating, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is, he said, this is not in any book, in any school of thought. It's not this archetype does not exist in the human domain. It's simply not something. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, yeah, yeah. So I think, do. I mean, it's funny because it's this thing that when you've done it, you obviously, you know, you get so excited about because it's, it, it, it's the one thing that kind of like opens those possibilities of places that we, all that thing that we dreamed since we were kids, that there's another world that there's this thing, it's right there for you. And yet, if somebody who's never done it, and I can totally understand it, it's completely meaningless. Like it, what we're saying right yeah, now is yeah. completely meaningless to them yeah. because it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I think that what the I, goes I'll tell their you why. Is, I'll tell you why. Because the perception about drugs is a very negative way and, and DMT perception is like drugs. It's negative. And, and um, the people that talk about drugs as a positive things are sound to people who don't do drugs as these people who do drugs. These people, they do drugs. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like you're, it's like, in a cult, know, in an yeah, invisible cult. cult. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of, um, um, crazy, um, um, but, but you know what? Let's talk about the people that will never try it. That is an interesting subject. What do you think that's about? Boring. Yeah, but what if, <laughs> do you think it's just... boring, man. Like, 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 do you really want to die that person who didn't see 
the other dimension? Seriously? Like, I, I, okay. How can you be that? Like, how? How, how can you like, be that? How, no, no, how, how can you be that person who is afraid or not afraid, is don't want to see, refuse to try? Yeah, it, 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 it's like I, I think the matrix is a perfect uh, metaphor, right? It's, 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 you know what, not even DMT. Something, once. You know, I, um, um, when I, when I, um, in my, in my time when I did a lot of drugs, the worst thing about me was when I, when I used to convince people to try drugs. <laughs> I, I, I was so bad, seriously. Um, no, but to, I get the they, sentiment. Yeah, like... Because like, I, I, I you feel like uh, missing out, really. Yeah, bro, yeah. fucking try it. What? <laughs> try it. Try it. I, I was one of these people. I, I was one of these bad boys, you know? Seriously. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. You know, it, now if I see someone, I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. He doesn't want to try. I'm, I'll be that parent. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we really go deep into it, it's like... We live once. Tomorrow, me and you, or you, we can fucking die. I don't want to be, I don't want to die not trying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to try. I want to see things, you know? And, 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 um, I'm sorry, but it's, 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 uh, some people will hate me for this, but if, if, if you're that person who don't want to try anything, you're boring. I'm yeah, boring. When, I'm when sorry. You, when, boring. You, when, you, when your kids get to a, to a certain age and they come to you, I mean, usually it doesn't happen that way. It's like in a perfect world. But if they would come to you and say, hey, I want to try, would you, at least DMT, would you encourage you know them? what? We were talking a lot about that, me and my wife. And she... I have a nine years old. She's like tiny. And I was drinking a beer. And I don't drink a lot of alcohol. Like I don't get drunk. I don't I'm, alcohol is not my thing too much. And and <clears throat> and it's like asking about alcohol. And right away my wife came to her and said, Listen, when you wanna try alcohol, come to me, I'll give you. But promise me one thing. So Ed and my daughter told her what, like, promise me one thing. Whenever, any age you want to try, you come to me, not out of the house. So if I would, please God, give me that abilities to be that first person who is giving to my kids when I get to the certain age, obviously, not 15, 16, not teenagers, a little bit older. I want to be that person who's going to sit with them and doing DMT with them. So, <clears throat> and I want to be that person and I want my daughter to go to my, to her mother, to my wife and say, hey, I want to see what is it alcohol. And I know my wife will let her try. And in certain age, obviously, we have rules. We're, we're, you know. Um, we're not crazy. Um, we're not savages. But you know what? <laughs> when I heard my wife saying, I'm like, I fucking love you for this thing, you know. This is this is this is that that's all about. And like, you, you know. So so for your question is, if my kids will come to me and say we want to try DMT, I'm like, I can't believe I got the honor to be that person to get this question. Fuck yeah! Where do you want to go, Burning Man? Let's go to fucking Burning Man, you know. And uh, yeah. My dreams, and you know what? All this conversation, all this art, and all this conversation about my family, is, this is the goal, to get to that point that my kids will come to me first, asking to try, and that certain age when I will feel comfortable with that. Um, I, think, I think all of my life comes to this kind of a question, yeah. Really? Because yeah. it's, uh, do you feel like, because you get to usher them into it's something a goal achievement. It's a goal achievement. If your son, when he's 19, comes to you and say, Dad, 
what's DMT is, or, well, he will know what's DMT is. You're not stupid, but I never tried that. And you're the first person I want to try with. For me, it will be a goal achievement. Oh, I see. You're saying that that's a goal because it's, it's the fact that they respect you and love you enough to actually come and... When I try ecstasy, the last thing I wanted to think about is my family. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> I, was, I was 16 years old. You know, I, I, I would never go to my father and say, let's try, let's try Yeah, but I think it was a different time. And a different father, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't compare. Yeah. No regrets. Okay, I like my father. And it is. And I don't even talk about drugs even those days. Even though I'm going to send this video to them and they're going to watch it or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is that I, as a person who don't hate drugs and I hang out with, you know, come on, the crowd. Um, I don't do anymore. Um, I, I, uh, it's a different conversation for, because of the PTSD and everything. It's a, but if my son will come, my daughter will come to me for me to go to shipment in certain age, obviously. What is, what do you think, uh, is the relationship between, um, well, actually, I guess, no, let me ask it differently. Do you think that the, these kinds of experiences specifically are truly some, like you said, you want everybody to try. Do you think that it, it, like your life actually is different after that? Or it's just that it's super interesting and therefore it's like. My life is different after that. Because you know that it's a possibility. I got in a lot of trouble because of that, and I got into an amazing experiences because of that. Wait, you're talking about drugs in general? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. okay no, you're talking about specifically with things like DMT, but oh, DMT specifically. Yeah. Um, I don't think it changed me, but um, I think I um, understand certain things differently now, hmm. and um, I think DMT gives you a great depth thought about everything in life. No, I think, you know, I think reassessment is the feeling that you yeah. really carries you. Yeah. Cause you're like, okay, I have to literally reassess everything I yeah. thought I knew. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this. And I already know that there's going to be a pushback because you said you don't like to think about like what, but would, how do you view the development of visual art uh, into this whole NFT space. Do you think it's going to completely take over after a little while? Or do you think that like physical art where we can like just go and touch is here to stay no matter what? Great. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a whole different thing. So you think those are separate trajectories altogether? And there are some bridges with bridges. Have, have you ever played with that idea, with that concept? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have an NFT. Oh, you do. Okay. So you do. I dropped an NFT. Um, I actually appreciate and respect that world a lot. I think, um, thank God it happened. I'm happy so much it happened. I'm happy it's been created this world. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get more into it. I love it. It's another avenue for us artists to create, and this is amazing. So you think it truly democratizes yeah. the thing? Perfect. Yeah. And I and I um, um, uh, encourage every artist and every creator and every human being get into it. <laughs> Can you uh, actually give me also? Because I only recently sort kind of started looking into it uh, a little bit of a, like the. So when you, cre when you mint a piece, uh, you basically just, you have to digitize it or you can create, or you can have the piece in the real world, but no, it has to be digitized. Everything is dig digital, digital. So it doesn't have to be a physical work. Okay. Well, but can it be a physical work at all? Can to be an empathy? How does that work? Like, how do you, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> It's funny because I do physical and NFT together. Um, so I, <clears throat> the person that will own the physical work, and, and, and the way I see it, 
Okay, I, I don't know what are the rules, but and what other I know what other some other people do, but uh, people that own that physical work will own the NFT, and the people that own the NFT will own the physical work. Basically, it has to come together if you have a physical work, because if you own the physical work and these guys own the NFT, it's kind of weird. For, to me, it, it doesn't really make any sense. But based on the physical work that we have, <clears throat> Kanye West is behind me right here. And if, um, not Kanye West, because I'm not going to do an NFT of Kanye West, it will be kind of a... Uh, would that be a problem, by the way? How does it work? Good question. I thought about that. <laughs> I don't know. I love him. And I would never take advantage of him. And he doesn't matter. No, but if, legally, is that taking advantage? Is that like, or is that like a gray area? I don't know. Oh, interesting. I don't know in that particular case. But um, I respect him so much that I won't take advantage of this. So I will do on something else. I will do on myself. I will do on a different portrait. Would you make Maybe. one and give one one? Give them one? Yeah. Yeah. I love him. I, I, I really, and I don't really like a lot of pop stars. I'm not into pop. I'm not into celebrities, uh, pop. How come? Uh, because he's so out there and just like lives this truth kind of thing? Yeah. Is it the, the fact that he doesn't give a fuck? Kind of thing? I, I think he's. Genius. Well, no, he, he's I, what he I creates think, truly is genius. But I, it, I think he stepped up than any other artist out there. But it does sound like he's not fully there when he talks about certain things. Who you cares? Don't think? Yeah, no. So okay, but like, I'm not there too. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares who is normal? Who is not normal? No, no, crazy, not even that normal. Not it just seems like it. In, in uh, like sometimes it seems like he's not like. Delusional does cross the mind. Like he's an incredible artist, but like, in, like you know, when he was running for president, like that kind of like. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Not from the fact about a, like, president. Uh, so what? The no, no, president. Like, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, it's like it's not that it's that high of an accolade. I think he reached higher than president already. You know, you know. I'm thinking it's just like that's not a direction that is realistic to make a move into, and then he kind of. But I guess, yeah, it's just nothing is about reality for me. Is about um, how far your balls and your brain <laughs> can merge together and go as much as they can. So you're saying you know, like, the, the more protrusion of balls there are to the world, the more respect I get. I can see. I, I, I love it about people. I love crazy people. I get connected to the most insane people ever. And, and that's what I'm seeking. That's what I like to see. That's who I create about. That's, 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 uh, this is the purpose of my creation. These people, you know, um, I'm looking for that crazy darkness craziness about people pull that out, out and and create about that that's i that this is super interesting to me no i agree with you i was always very attracted to the bazaar because i think that's where that's where the it's fun no it is fun it's and it's fun. also it truly is too serious out there bro everything is too too no no 100 you know. the most creative people that i know they are out, really out there and I, I think you really do have to be. You can't be bound by what most people think if you want to create it. You can't be worried too much about what other people think if you're going to create the next like, truly like, interesting big thing. There's no way. You, yeah. it, it will stop you. So, and I know it's Did kinda... you see his boots? <laughs> What's the thing with the boots, man? They got <laughs> genius. They got genius. You know, those are the boots that every kid was crying to his mom not to wear when it was snowing out there or, or raining out there. Like, those are the no-no boots that every kid didn't want to wear. And that guy brought it. And right now, everybody will wear those boots because he's, he, listen, the guy is genius. You, 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 we can say so many bad things about him, but. Oh, I'm not saying bad things about him. I, I, just, I, I think know, he's, no, no, the world is, you know, these, these yellow life celebrity magazines and everything, which I don't read. Oh, you mean tabloids? You know. No, but, no, I'm not, I'm not talking from that perspective. I'm just saying. I wish we had more of Kanye West. That's, uh, <laughs> that's one liner. I like yeah. it. And you know, so who's this, by the way? This guy is a friend of mine. He's um, he's a barber who, on Melrose, very um, interesting uh, place. 
So I've met him through my friend Joseph, uh, Joseph E. Shine. <clears throat> um, he came to my studio one day. I took a few photos of him. He started to, you know, tell me a story about his girlfriend who dumped him that moment, like a few minutes before he stepped into my studio. He was full of tears, and and I took a photo of him. And, and like he's telling me these stories and everything and the guy's like about to cry and I'm like, do you mind if I'll take a photo of him? It was kind of rude, but I took a photo of him. <laughs> you just listened to him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. But, um, you know, sometimes I'm so selfish and I, and I, and I care only about, um, I want to capture that moment in the visual. That's a great know, moment. And, 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 and I want to paint it. And right away when I got the photo, I showed it to him and I'm like, bro, I have to paint it. And I, and I painted him and he, and he, he has an amazing, I, it's actually one of my favorite paintings. Um, and um, I love him. He's a great dude. Really What's good guy. What's his name? Do you mind saying? His name is Mark. Mark. His name is Mark. He has a great style, great look. His mustache is like, like Salvador Dali, everybody thinks it's Salvador yeah, Dali. Yeah, yeah, there's not. A, something very Salvador yeah. Dali ish about yeah. it Be because of the mustache, you know. But well, no, um, no, there's something about a little bit. Well, there's uh, some young Johnny Depp and uh, what's his face? Uh, yeah, names it's never gonna happen, never mind. But another yeah. actor, not a famous actor. Yeah. Uh, so that guy is not famous, he's yeah. just uh, uh, the story, you know, um, um, was great and uh, and uh. That moment, was, I had a great moment with him, and, and I loved his, this visual, and it means a lot to me, you know, like, like that man, manly look, even though you're hurt, and you're so weak, and you're sad, but trying to be that man person, that, you know, uh, male, and not showing those emotions and feelings and this is what painting is showing me like that sometimes you even even when you want to cry you you got to be that person who's not showing that and sometimes not always you know not always you have to share your feelings with everybody it's like oh I, you know. sometimes you just bro hold your fucking crying <laughs> shut up and just be a man you know sometimes you just got to be that person and this is what painting is means to me that you know hold it not don't release it everywhere not everyone wants to to hear your crying stories you know not everyone wants to, want to hear you sad sometimes you just need to hold it and be a man and tomorrow you're going to be better and that's what these paintings is 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 is, um, is about you know you know i used to take acting classes and it was a picture of morgan freeman next to the bathroom and it was a quote which i hope is actually attributed to him because you know how those things go but it said Acting is not about emoting. It's the feeling that you're trying to suppress and what bleeds around the edges yeah, is what's love interesting. It. I love it. I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And that's essentially what, the, what this is, what I see. Let me, let me close with these two uh, rapid fire questions. Uh, number one, would you go to Mars? I would. Hell yeah. Tomorrow. Even if you, oh, no, let's say you know you can't come back. Can I take with me people? Yes. Then yeah. Oh yeah. You're gonna convince people to go, or they're yeah, gonna? Yeah, I convince people to do every bad my shit. My my girlfriend, my girlfriend <laughs> is really not really to go. I really want to no. go. No. Um and uh, well, I guess we can we'll see each other on Mars. Yeah. Um, the second question is, what would be your own advice from the perspective of yourself when you're 85 to your current self? Re 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 repeat that. Okay. What would be an advice? from you when you're 85 to yourself now? <sighs> Live the fucking moment. Simple everything as that. Is, everything is, is bullshit. Stop chasing. Um, enjoy life. Do whatever ha makes you happy now. And don't worry too much about the future. Tomer. Uh, you're the fucking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>